Chicken wrapped in phyllo, or what I call chicken in a purse, uses boneless chicken thighs with herbs and cheese all wrapped up in phyllo like a pretty package. Your guests will think that you were in the kitchen for hours. Hi everyone, welcome to today's episode of Let's Celebrate TV. I'm your host, Peter Lee. On this channel, we teach you all about celebrating. We share recipes for food, hors d'oeuvres, cocktails, and we share entertaining tips too. Now we try and keep it all as simple as possible, especially for those of you out there who say that you just can't cook or entertain, because we know that you really can. So if you like this episode, hit the subscribe button hit the like button, hit the notification bell, and you'll get a new episode every single week. Today, our celebration is all about one of my favorite meals to cook. It's chicken wrapped in phyllo, or as we like to call it, chicken in a purse. So let's get started. I have my favorite cast iron here heating up, and I have some chicken thighs. Now I've already trimmed three of them, I have four, and I'm gonna show you what I mean by trimmed. Chicken thighs can be kind of fatty, which is what makes them unctuous, but we don't need all of this extra fat. So I just like to take a moment and a very sharp little knife and trim it off. It's very easy. Now I like this dish because it's so versatile, it's great for company, especially new people. Uh, it's very easy to do, but it's very dramatic. You can make this with beef or salmon or lamb, but I like chicken because chicken is safe. Okay, so just this little bit of fat. Alrighty, now, that took just a moment. Okay, in our pan, some olive oil, a couple tablespoons. Don't need much, but you want a little. Now we're going to season these chicken thighs with salt and pepper. Liberally. All right. And now we're gonna brown them. We want to get them nice and browned on the outside and they're gonna cook about three quarters of the way into our pan. We wanna make sure we season both sides. Yeah, this is gonna take a few minutes. All right, so the chicken's done, it's all nice and browned, and I have it on a plate resting behind me. It took about four minutes per side. My pan is still nice and hot, let's put the heat back on, and we're gonna build the filling now. We're gonna start Cremini mushrooms. This is five ounce pack, or actually a 10 ounce pack. All I did was I put them in the food processor, a few pulses, like maybe four or five pulses, just to break them down. You don't wanna go any further than this because then they'll just be mush. We're gonna put these in the hot pan. We wanna cook them till they're drying out. And what that's gonna do is that liquid is gonna deglaze all that good chicken up from the pan and it'll stick to the mushrooms. So let's get this in. And as always, we're gonna add a little salt and pepper to season it. We wanna season every layer, and the salt is gonna help draw the moisture out of these mushrooms. All right, we're just gonna let these go and cook down. 
All right, these are about ready. It's been about four minutes. And I've had these on like a medium high heat and you wanna keep an eye on them and stir them occasionally because you want them to dry but not burn. All right, these are looking good to me. Let me just grab a mitt because this is screaming hot. Okay, into the bowl. All righty. Now, the best part, the cheese. I'm using Borson cheese. You can get this in any grocery store. This is the garlic and herb flavor, which is one I like. And it comes in these little, I think it's about five ounce cakes, just like that. We're gonna put this whole thing right in here and mix it all up. Now the Borson cheese is very soft and I've been letting it sit out to really help it soften even more. So you just mix these with the hot mushrooms and it's gonna all come together. Now the best thing about this, you can make this mixture ahead of time. You can do it the night before or even a couple of days before and just put it in an airtight container in your refrigerator. All right, now I could eat this just as it is. Okay, so this is all done, all mixed. I'm gonna put this aside to cool down and I'm gonna clear off the decks and then we're going to assemble our chickens in a purse. And now we're ready to assemble our chickens in a purse. So what is the purse made of? We're using phyllo dough. The phyllo dough is in your freezer section. It comes in a little box like this and it's usually by the desserts. So normally we wanna keep this under a damp towel. This is pretty damp, but I'm gonna work quickly. So this is pretty easy and it's pretty fun. You just get a sheet of phyllo or two. You put it down. You wanna give it a brush with melted butter. That's gonna give it some flavor. It's gonna help the layers stick together. It just makes it better because Butter makes everything better. Doesn't have to be perfect. All right, next sheet. We're gonna do four layers. But actually, before we do the next sheet, I have two ounces of chives and two ounces of parsley that I chopped up and mixed up. We're gonna sprinkle some on there. Next layer. Now, you may get a tear. Don't worry, it's fine. So lay it this way across. More butter. Just kind of lightly, you don't need to drown it. And you guessed it, some more herbs. Two more to go. Okay, now on this final one, you don't need the herbs. What's next? Next is our chicken. I have a little thigh here. It's all nice and brown, and I'm gonna put it right in the center. And remember, these are only about three quarters of the way cooked. Then our mushroom mixture. Just a little dollop. Not too, too much. You don't wanna overdo it. Now, if you don't like mushrooms, you can do this with goat cheese and cranberries, another great way. Now the fun part, you just gather all these corners up and they're gonna be a little messy and haphazard. And you just gather it up and give it a good pinch, just like that. And that is chicken in a purse. Now I'm gonna put this aside on a little sheet pan that's lined with parchment paper I'm gonna make three more. Okay, here we are. All four of them are made. Now you see they're all very different looking. They're maybe a little sloppy looking or haphazard, and that's part of the fun. They don't all have to be the same. They don't have to be perfect. Now when you're working with phyllo, if a couple sheets stick together, it's fine. If it starts to dry out and tears, just discard the sheet and move on to the next one. Don't panic, don't get worried. It's perfectly fine.
Now, these are going to go into a 375 degree oven for about 20 minutes. We want the pastry to get nice and golden brown and we want to get the chicken cooked and we want the chicken to reach an internal temperature of 160 degrees. So, off to the oven. And here we are, all out of the oven. Look at how gorgeous these are. I mean, wouldn't you love to come to someone's house for dinner and be served with this? Beautiful and easy to do. So just a quick recap. We put these in the oven, 375, for about 20 minutes, and we cook them to an internal temperature of 160 degrees. Now, before anyone calls the chicken police on me, these have been out sitting and resting for about 10 minutes, and I just checked them, and they all on their own came up to 165, 168 in that area, which is just right for chicken thighs. So don't worry. Remember, carryover cooking. Now I'm going to try to delicately get one of these off of here, and we'll have our taste. Now, nice and easy, thanks to the parchment. Let's tuck right in. I've got a nice steak knife, and I'm gonna cut this right in half so we can see the hole inside. Listen to that. Oh. Look at that. Perfection. So let's have a little taste. I'm gonna go right over here. Wow, that's so good. Mmm. That chicken thigh is tender and juicy, and yes, fully cooked. The mushrooms, that earthiness of the mushrooms and the garlicky cheese, wow, it just brings it all together. It's creamy. Then you get that crunch from the phyllo dough and the herbs in the phyllo. Delicious. Need my little charging goose from the old field. Wash it all down. Mmm. Mmm. That's wonderful. And this is my favorite dish to make for any occasion. So, as always, we're going to have the recipe and instructions up online, like we always do. And remember, guys, follow us on social media, especially our new website. So until we see you again next Tuesday at 7 p.m., remember, you're all invited to come on over. Come on in. Let's celebrate. Cheers.